Fellow Americans, today we face uncertain times. With the looming threat of a massive mainland USA attack, the question isn't if we should prepare, but how and what we should prepare. Are you ready to ensure the safety and survival of you and your loved ones? I'm here to guide you through the 15 critical preps you need to stockpile. Yep. While there are countless items you might consider stockpiling, I want to focus on 15 critical items that should be at the top of your list. 15. Surveillance and Alarm Systems when considering surveillance and alarm systems to bolster security during high threat scenarios or potential attacks, it's imperative to select equipment that's not only reliable, but also tailored to meet your specific needs. This is especially crucial in the context of a massive mainland USA attack, where being prepared and alert can make all the difference. Let's delve into the types of security cameras available. You have a range of options from indoor to outdoor, wired to wireless. Brands like Arlo, Nest, Ring, and Lorex are at the forefront, offering high-quality security cameras. For outdoor surveillance, it's wise to opt for models that boast weatherproofing and night vision capabilities. These cameras are your eyes on the ground, providing continuous monitoring of your property. They play a pivotal role in identifying potential threats and gathering evidence in the event of an incident. In situations where power reliability is a concern, battery or solar-powered cameras are your go-to options. Brands like Arlo and Ring have made significant strides in battery-powered cameras, offering extended battery life. For solar-powered models, Reolink and Blink are commendable choices. These cameras ensure that your surveillance system remains operational even during power outages, maintaining continuous vigilance. Door and window alarms should not be overlooked. Companies like SimpliSafe, Wise, and GE have developed reliable systems that alert you to any potential breaches. These alarms are straightforward yet effective in notifying you if someone attempts to enter your home without authorization. For a more rudimentary yet practical approach, consider setting up tripwires with bells or cans around potential entry points on your property. This low-tech solution serves as an early warning system. The noise generated by someone tripping the wire can alert you to their presence. While less reliable than high-tech options, this method can be particularly useful in rural or remote areas. A centralized monitoring system is the cornerstone of a comprehensive security setup. Companies like ADT and Vivan offer services that integrate various security components into one cohesive unit. This system connects all your surveillance and alarm devices, providing professional monitoring and immediate response in case of threats or breaches. In the face of a large-scale attack on the mainland USA, these surveillance and alarm systems are instrumental in keeping you informed and prepared. They offer multiple layers of security and early warning systems, significantly enhancing your ability to detect and respond to potential threats. However, it's not just about installing these systems. Customizing your security setup based on your location, budget, and anticipated threat level is essential. Regular maintenance and testing are crucial to ensure these systems function optimally when you need them most. Moreover, involving local law enforcement and emergency services in your security planning is a wise move. This ensures a coordinated response in extreme scenarios, enhancing the effectiveness of your security measures. 14. Family Communication Plan and Emergency Information In the face of a massive attack on the U.S. mainland, the importance of being prepared cannot be overstated. It's crucial for the safety and well-being of you and your family to have a well-thought-out plan. Let's dive deeper into how you can organize and act with a focus on family communication plans and emergency information. When establishing a family communication plan, it's vital to decide on both primary and secondary means of communication. While mobile phones are a go-to option, don't overlook the importance of email, social media, and messaging apps, especially if phone networks become overloaded. Also, it's often easier to make long-distance calls during a crisis, so having an out-of-town contact who can serve as a central point of communication is a smart move. Your plan should include predetermined meeting points. These should cover a range of scenarios. A nearby safe spot for sudden emergencies like a fire, a neighborhood location if you can't return home, and an out-of-town spot if the entire area is affected. It's not just about picking these locations. Make sure every family member knows exactly where they are. In terms of relaying messages, understand how to contact emergency services and stay tuned to specific radio stations for emergency alerts. If direct communication isn't possible, use social media or email to leave status updates. This can be a lifeline in keeping everyone informed. Your information kits are equally important. They should include copies of personal identification, medical information like allergies, medications, conditions, and emergency contact numbers. 
Don't forget to include maps with marked meeting points and routes to them. Moving on to emergency information, basic survival skills are a must. This includes first aid knowledge, understanding how to find, purify, and store water, and knowing about non-perishable food storage and preparation. Skills in creating temporary shelter and keeping warm are also crucial. Regular reviews and drills of your emergency plan are non-negotiable. This ensures that everyone in the family is up to date and knows what to do. Conduct drills to practice evacuations, meeting at designated spots, and using different communication methods. Staying informed is key. Subscribe to local alert systems for real-time updates and keep an eye on news and official channels for potential threats and changing situations. Preparation for different scenarios is also critical. Have specific strategies for natural disasters common to your area, like hurricanes, earthquakes, or floods. For human-made threats, know multiple evacuation routes out of your city and understand how to shelter in place effectively. Your supply kits should be well-stocked with food, water, medications, batteries, flashlights, and other essentials. Each family member should also have a go bag with personal essentials, ready for quick evacuation. Mental and emotional preparedness is often overlooked but is just as important. Develop and practice stress relief techniques and pay special attention to the emotional and psychological needs of children. Building relationships with neighbors and community members for mutual support can be invaluable. Also, be aware of local shelters, community centers, and emergency services. Finally, staying flexible and adaptable is crucial. Be ready to adjust your plans based on the current situation and available information. Always have backup plans in case your initial plan becomes unfeasible. Preparing for a massive attack involves comprehensive planning, regular practice, and staying informed. It's about ensuring safety, maintaining communication, and being adaptable to various scenarios. The key is not just to have a plan, but to regularly review and practice it, ensuring that every family member understands their role and actions to take in different emergency situations. 13. Secure storage solutions. When you're considering secure storage solutions for your valuable assets, important documents, and cash reserves, there's a lot at stake. It's not just about keeping these items out of the wrong hands. It's about ensuring they survive through disasters like fires or floods. You need to be thorough in your approach to protect what matters most to you. Let's dive deeper into choosing the right safe. It's crucial to find one that's both fireproof and waterproof, but don't just take these labels at face value. Look into the specifics. How long can the safe withstand a fire? What depth and duration of water resistance does it offer? Size and capacity are equally important. Think about what you need to store now and what you might need to store in the future. The lock type is another critical factor. While combination and key locks have their merits, biometric locks provide a higher security level and quicker access. And don't overlook anchoring and concealment. A safe that's easily carried away isn't safe at all. It should be bolted down and hidden out of plain sight. Now, what should you store in your safe? Important documents like property deeds, birth certificates, passports, and wills are a given. But also consider emergency cash. How much? Enough to cover at least a month of living expenses is a good rule of thumb, but this can vary based on your personal situation. If you're into precious metals or have valuable jewelry and family heirlooms, these should definitely be secured in your safe. Digital asset protection is a whole other ball game. For personal or sensitive digital files, encrypted USB drives are your best bet. And if you're dealing with significant amounts of cryptocurrencies, hardware wallets are non-negotiable. They're the gold standard for keeping your digital wealth safe from online threats. But don't just set and forget. Regularly back up your digital files and consider keeping an off-site backup in a secure location. Stockpiling essentials is also key. We've touched on cash, but this also extends to other critical supplies you might need immediate access to in an emergency. Regularly review and update the contents of your safe. Your needs today might not be your needs tomorrow. Let's talk about some additional tips. Your homeowner's or renter's insurance should cover the contents of your safe. This is something you need to confirm and not assume. Secrecy is also paramount. The fewer people who know about your safe and its contents, the better. And in terms of accessibility, make sure someone you trust knows how to access it in case you're unable to. Maintenance is often overlooked but is vital. Regularly check your safe's condition, its lock mechanism, and any electronic components. For digital security, staying up to date with encryption and antivirus software is crucial. Investing in a high-quality, safe, and secure storage solutions is more than a precaution. It's a necessity for protecting your valuable assets, important documents, and cash reserves. The right safe should meet all your needs, fireproof, waterproof, securely anchored, and appropriately sized. For digital assets, don't skimp on security. 
Encrypted USB drives and hardware wallets are your best friends here. And remember, regular maintenance and updates are not just recommended, they're essential. Your approach to what you store and how much you stockpile should be thoughtful and reflective of your current and future needs. This isn't just about keeping your valuables safe, it's about ensuring peace of mind. 12. Communication Equipment In times of crisis, the security of your country, community, and family could be at stake. During these moments, effective communication isn't just helpful. It's a critical component of survival and resilience. The breakdown of standard communication networks, such as cell phones and the internet, can isolate individuals and communities, making it difficult to access vital information and coordinate responses. Understanding what communication equipment to consider, why they are important, and how to use them effectively can make all the difference. Let's start with hand crank or solar powered radios. When electricity is out, these radios become your lifeline to the outside world. They ensure you have access to news, weather alerts, and emergency broadcasts. These radios are independent of conventional power sources, which is a lifesaver during prolonged power outages. To use them effectively, you should regularly check and maintain your radio. Make sure you're familiar with the frequencies used for emergency broadcasts in your area. In an emergency, use it to stay updated on the situation and follow any instructions or information provided by authorities. Next, consider two-way radios, commonly known as walkie-talkies. These are crucial for local direct communication when cell phone networks are down or overloaded. They're ideal for staying in contact with family members or neighbors, especially if you need to split up for any reason like gathering supplies or seeking help. Make sure all family members know how to operate these devices. Establish clear communication protocols, such as regular check-in times, keep them charged and store extra batteries, or have a means to recharge them, like solar chargers. Speaking of power, solar chargers or extra batteries are essential. Keeping your communication devices powered is vital. Solar chargers and extra batteries ensure that your devices remain functional even when there's no power supply. Regularly check the condition of your batteries and keep your solar chargers in an easily accessible location. Familiarize yourself with the operation of the solar chargers. For long distance information, a shortwave radio can be invaluable. It can pick up international broadcasts, which can be crucial for getting a broader perspective on the situation, especially if local media is compromised or unavailable. Learn how to tune into different shortwave bands and identify which stations are likely to broadcast in your language or region. Practice using it before an emergency occurs. Some general tips and practices. Regular testing and maintenance of all equipment is crucial to ensure it is in working order. This includes checking battery life, signal strength, and the functionality of all features. Education and training are also key. Make sure all family members understand how to use each piece of equipment and consider practicing emergency drills where you use these communication tools. Store your communication equipment in a secure, easily accessible location. Consider waterproof and shockproof storage options to protect against environmental factors. Stay informed about the types of emergencies most likely to occur in your area and the standard emergency protocols, including the designated emergency frequencies. Always have backup plans in case one form of communication fails. For example, if walkie-talkies fail, have a predetermined meeting place or another way to relay messages, like through a neighbor. Networking with your community is also important. Establish communication networks with your local community, such as setting up a neighborhood watch or emergency response group where you can share information and resources. Be mindful of the information you share over communication channels, as they might not be secure. Respect for privacy and security is paramount. 11. Shelter and warmth materials. Your survival could hinge on having the right shelter and warmth materials and knowing how to use them effectively. Let's delve deeper into what you need to buy, why these items are crucial, and how to best utilize them. When it comes to choosing a high-quality tent, think beyond just any tent. You need one that stands up to harsh weather conditions and is easy to set up, especially under stress. Look for a tent that's durable, weather-resistant, and appropriately sized for your family. This isn't just a camping accessory, it's a potential temporary home if your house is compromised. Sleeping bags are not just for comfort, they are a vital survival tool. When the heating system is down, a good sleeping bag can be the difference between staying warm and hypothermia. Choose bags rated for temperatures lower than the coldest conditions expected in your area. Consider the insulation type down is warmer but less effective when wet, whereas synthetic fills are bulkier but perform better in damp conditions. Also, think about weight and how easily they can be carried or stored. 
Emergency blankets, often called space blankets, are more than just thin, shiny sheets. They are designed to retain body heat and can be lifesavers in preventing hypothermia or shock. Look for blankets that are reflective, waterproof, windproof, and lightweight. Their compact size makes them easy to store in various locations like your car, home, and emergency kit. Heavy-duty plastic sheeting and duct tape might seem like simple items, but their versatility in a crisis is unparalleled. They can insulate your home, patch up broken windows, or even construct a makeshift shelter. Choose thick, durable sheeting and duct tape with strong adhesion and weather resistance. These materials can help fortify your home against the elements, buying you crucial time and comfort. An alternative heat source is a must-have if your primary heating system fails. A wood stove with a stockpile of wood is great for long-term heating, but remember, it requires proper ventilation. Portable heaters can be a good short-term solution, but they come with risks like carbon monoxide poisoning. Always ensure adequate ventilation and follow safety guidelines strictly. Now, owning these materials isn't enough. You need to know how to use them. Practice setting up your tent and using the sleeping bags and heaters. Store everything in a dry, accessible place and keep fuels stored safely, adhering to fire safety guidelines. Regularly check and maintain your equipment. Inspect the tent for damage. Keep sleeping bags clean and dry and check the expiration dates on emergency blankets. Ventilation is crucial when using any heating equipment. Carbon monoxide buildup can be deadly, so ensure there's enough airflow. Insulating your home with plastic sheeting and duct tape can significantly reduce heat loss, making your heating methods more effective. Conduct emergency drills with your family. Everyone should know how to use these materials. Keep a battery-powered or hand-crank radio handy to stay informed about weather conditions and emergency instructions. In an actual emergency, prioritize safety first. If your home is unsafe, move to your temporary shelter. Conserve heat using space blankets and sleeping bags even inside the tent. Keep an eye on each other for signs of hypothermia or other health issues. Staying dry is crucial as wet conditions can lead to hypothermia. Know where your local community shelters and resources are in case of severe emergencies. 10. Sanitation and hygiene supplies. Sanitation and hygiene are often overlooked, yet they are critical for maintaining health and preventing the spread of diseases. This is particularly vital when regular services and supplies might be disrupted. Let's dive into the essentials of what you need to buy, how much, and why each item is crucial. Toilet paper is a basic necessity that quickly becomes scarce in emergencies. Ensure you have enough for each person in your household for at least a month. It's not just about comfort. It's about maintaining personal hygiene and preventing infections. Soap and hand sanitizer are your first line of defense against germs. Soap is indispensable for washing hands and maintaining general cleanliness. In situations where water is limited, hand sanitizer becomes a lifesaver. Stock up on a few large bottles of hand sanitizer and a substantial supply of bar or liquid soap. Oral hygiene is a part of your overall health. Toothpaste, toothbrushes, and dental floss are essential. Aim for a three to six month supply per person. Neglecting oral care can lead to health issues that are the last thing you need in a crisis. For women, an adequate supply of feminine hygiene products is non-negotiable. Sanitary pads, tampons, or menstrual cups should be stocked for about six months per person. These items might become hard to find, so it's better to be prepared. Heavy-duty garbage bags are surprisingly versatile. They're crucial for waste disposal, but they can also be used for waterproofing and other emergency needs. Depending on your household size, having 50, 100 bags is a good idea. Portable toilets can be a game changer if you're displaced or if water services are interrupted. They help maintain sanitary conditions and prevent the spread of waste-borne diseases. One per household, along with a supply of chemicals and liners, should suffice. Disinfectants and cleaning supplies are essential for keeping your living space sanitary. Stock up on disinfectant sprays or wipes, bleach, and other cleaning agents. In a situation where germs can spread rapidly, these supplies are your allies in keeping your environment safe. Personal hygiene items like deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, razors, and other personal care items are often forgotten in emergency planning. However, they play a significant role in maintaining morale and mental health. A three to six month supply per person is advisable. Water purification supplies are critical if the water supply is contaminated or disrupted. Having water purification tablets, filters, or boiling equipment is crucial, not just for drinking, but for hygiene purposes like cleaning and cooking. Moist towelettes or wet wipes are invaluable for personal hygiene, especially when water access is limited. They're also great for cleaning surfaces and utensils. For those with infants or toddlers, a sufficient supply of diapers and baby wipes is crucial. 
In a crisis, the well-being of the youngest members of your family is a top priority. A well-stocked first aid kit is a must. It should include basic medical supplies and items like antiseptic wipes and hand gloves, crucial for maintaining hygiene. When considering the quantity of supplies, think about the number of people in your household and the duration you're preparing for. A general rule is to prepare for at least one month, but aiming for three to six months is ideal. Why are these items so important? Good hygiene is key to preventing the spread of infectious diseases, especially when medical resources might be scarce. Personal hygiene affects not just physical health, but also morale and mental well-being. In stressful situations, the ability to maintain personal cleanliness can provide a sense of normalcy and dignity. Being self-sufficient in terms of hygiene reduces your dependency on external supplies, which is crucial when resources are scarce. Lastly, items like heavy-duty garbage bags are adaptable to various needs, an invaluable trait in unpredictable situations. 9. Reliable Source of Power and Light in the face of a massive attack on the U.S. mainland, being prepared for power outages is not just advisable, it's a necessity. Let's delve deeper into the options available to ensure you have a reliable source of power and light, understanding their uses and why they're critical in such scenarios. Solar chargers are your go-to devices for keeping small electronics like smartphones and tablets powered up. These nifty gadgets convert sunlight into electricity, making them perfect for situations where the power grid is down. Their biggest advantage is their independence from conventional power sources. As long as the sun is shining, you can keep your devices charged. Hand crank radios are more than just a novelty. They're a lifeline in emergencies. By manually turning a crank, you power the radio, capable of receiving AM, FM, and often NOAA weather alerts. Many models come with extra features like a built-in flashlight or a USB port, which can be a game changer when other communication channels fail. Staying informed is key in a crisis and a hand crank radio ensures that. When it comes to lighting, LED flashlights are your best bet. They're not only durable and long lasting, but also incredibly energy efficient. Having a variety of flashlights and a substantial stock of batteries, preferably rechargeable ones paired with a solar charger is wise. In a scenario like a massive attack, being able to see clearly is crucial for safety and navigation. Portable solar generators step up the game from solar chargers. They can handle more and larger devices, making them ideal for longer-term power outages. These generators are quiet, emission-free, and environmentally friendly. Their effectiveness, however, hinges on sunlight availability, which is something to consider. For a more robust power supply, fuel generators are indispensable. They can power everything from your lights to essential appliances. In prolonged power outages, they're a lifeline. But they come with their own set of challenges, like the need for a steady fuel supply and safe storage, not to mention the noise and exhaust they produce. LED lanterns are a safer alternative to traditional gas lanterns and provide a stable light source. They're perfect for illuminating larger spaces like rooms or campsites and are more energy efficient than traditional bulbs. In a crisis, having a reliable, safe light source is invaluable. Don't overlook the simplicity of candles. They provide light, a bit of warmth, and a sense of normalcy in chaotic times. Paired with waterproof matches, they're a reliable solution in damp conditions. While they're not as high-tech as other options, their ease of use and reliability make them a must-have. Communication devices are your link to the outside world. Keeping them charged is crucial. Whether it's through solar chargers, power banks, or generators, ensuring you can communicate is vital for both safety and coordination. Each option has its strengths and weaknesses. Solar solutions are renewable and safe but rely on sunlight. Hand crank devices are dependable but offer limited power. Fuel generators are powerful but come with the challenges of fuel storage and noise. In preparing for a massive attack, it's not about choosing one solution over another. Instead, it's about combining these options to create a comprehensive plan that addresses all your power and lighting needs. This approach ensures your safety, keeps you informed, and maintains essential communication lines during critical times. 8. Having the right clothing and personal protection gear isn't just a matter of comfort. It's a critical factor for your safety, mobility, and overall well-being. Let's dive deeper into what you need to consider, how to choose the best options and the essentials for stockpiling. <laughs> when it comes to clothing, moisture wicking layers are your first line of defense. They're not just about keeping you dry, they're about survival, especially in cold conditions where staying dry is key to preventing hypothermia. Opt for synthetic or merino wool fabrics and steer clear of cotton because it holds moisture. You'll want at least three sets per person. 
This allows for a rotation system, ensuring you always have a dry set available. And insulated jackets are next. These are your armor against the cold. Look for jackets filled with down or synthetic insulation. If you're in a wet climate, make sure the material is water resistant. Generally, one per person suffices, but it's wise to have an extra on hand for unexpected drops in temperature, or if your primary jacket gets damaged. Don't overlook your feet. Sturdy boots are essential. They're not just about keeping your feet dry. They provide crucial support for navigating rough terrain and offer much needed insulation. Go for waterproof, durable boots with a solid grip and ankle support. Remember to break them in well before any crisis hits. A single pair per person is a good start, but if you have the space, pack an extra pair. Hats, gloves, and thermal underwear are often underestimated, but are vital for maintaining body heat in cold climates. Choose wool or synthetic fabrics for thermal underwear, insulated gloves, and warm hats. Two sets per person are ideal, allowing one to dry while you wear the other. Moving on to personal protection gear, dust masks, or respirators are a must. They're your shield against harmful particles in the air, which can be a real threat in natural disasters or industrial accidents. Basic N95 masks work for most situations, but if you're facing more severe environments, consider a higher grade respirator. Stockpile a box of disposable masks or a few reusable respirators with extra filters for each person. Your eyes need protection too. Sunglasses or protective eyewear shield your eyes from harmful UV rays, debris, and other environmental hazards. Look for UV protective impact resistant options. One pair per person is essential, but having a spare is a good idea. Don't forget heavy-duty work gloves. They're crucial for protecting your hands during manual work, preventing blisters, and ensuring a better grip. Opt for durable gloves made of leather or synthetic materials that offer both dexterity and protection. Aim for one to two pairs per person. Now let's talk about testing and maintenance. It's not enough to just have this gear. You need to ensure it's always ready for use. Regularly try on your clothing and gear. Check for wear and tear, especially on items like boots and gloves. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for cleaning and storing your items. For respirators and masks, keep an eye on expiration dates and check that seals are intact. There are additional considerations too. In colder climates, the ability to layer clothing is crucial. It allows you to adapt to changing temperatures and activity levels. In wet climates, waterproof outer layers can be lifesavers. Don't forget about rain gear, including jackets and pants. In some crisis scenarios, being visible is vital for safety, especially if you need to be seen by rescuers. And always have a plan for portability. Keep a backpack or bag ready to carry your essential gear if you need to move quickly. Selecting the right clothing and personal protection gear for a crisis means considering your specific environment, potential hazards, and personal needs. Quality matters. These items may need to withstand harsh conditions. 7. When preparing for long-term survival, especially in scenarios where you might need to evacuate quickly, having a well-thought-out emergency evacuation kit, commonly known as a bug-out bag, for each family member is crucial. The goal of these kits is to sustain each person for a minimum of 72 hours until a safer location or more permanent solution is found. Let's dive into a detailed breakdown of what each bug-out bag should ideally contain. Firstly, the backpack itself is your foundation. You need something durable, comfortable, and lightweight. It should have multiple compartments for easy organization, but be manageable for the person carrying it. This isn't just any backpack, it's your lifeline in an emergency, so choose wisely. Water is your next priority. Each person needs at least one liter per day. But since carrying large amounts of water is impractical, you also need water purification methods. Tablets, portable filters, or a SteriPen can make questionable water sources safe to drink. Remember, dehydration is a fast track to serious health issues in survival situations. Food is your next big ticket item. You want non-perishable, high energy, and easy to prepare items. Think energy bars, dried fruits, nuts, jerky, ready to eat meals, and canned goods with a pull tab opening. If you can, include a small camping stove and fuel. Being able to heat food and water can be a game changer for both morale and health. Clothing is about practicality and protection. Pack a change of clothes appropriate for the climate, including underwear, socks, a warm layer like a fleece or thermal, and a waterproof layer. Don't forget comfortable and durable footwear. In a survival situation, your feet are your best friends. Shelter and warmth are next. A lightweight tent, emergency bivy, or space blankets can save your life. They provide protection from the elements. Also pack a small, compact sleeping bag or travel blanket for each person. Hypothermia is a real danger, even in seemingly mild conditions. A basic first aid kit is non-negotiable. Include bandages, gauze, adhesive tape, antiseptic wipes, antibiotic ointment, pain relievers, allergy medication, and any prescription medications. 
A first aid manual can be a lifesaver when you're under stress and need guidance. Hygiene items are often overlooked but vital. Toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, wet wipes, hand sanitizer, menstrual products, and a small towel should all be in your bag. Staying clean isn't just about comfort, it's about health. Tools and equipment are your problem solvers. A multi-tool or Swiss army knife, a flashlight or headlamp with extra batteries, a manual can opener, and a fire starting tool like matches, a lighter, or a ferro rod are essentials. These items can make the difference between a manageable situation and a dire one. Communication and navigation tools connect you to the world. A battery-powered or hand-crank radio, a whistle, a compass, and regional maps are basics. If possible, include a solar charger and a spare cell phone or an emergency satellite phone. In today's connected world, being able to reach out for help or information is crucial. Personal items like identification, cash in small denominations, and copies of important documents like passports, birth certificates, and insurance policies are often forgotten in the rush. But in an evacuation, they're as important as food and water also include a list of emergency contacts. For those with specific medical needs, pack extra glasses, contact lenses, hearing aid batteries, and necessary prescription medications. For children, comfort items like a small toy or a book can make a big difference. And for infants, don't forget baby supplies like formula, diapers, and baby wipes. Depending on your region and situation, you might also want to include sunglasses, sunblock, insect repellent, a sewing kit, duct tape, and a notebook with a pen. These items might seem minor, but in certain conditions, they can be incredibly important. Remember, the key is to keep the bag as light as possible while ensuring it contains all essentials. Regularly review and update the contents of your bug out bags to reflect changes in family needs, the expiry dates of items, and seasonal changes in your environment. Each family member should be familiar with the contents of their bag, and if old enough, should be able to pack and carry it independently. 6. Fire Starting Tools and Fuel Fire starting is not just a skill, it's an essential part of survival and preparedness, crucial in scenarios ranging from power outages to camping adventures. Let's dive deeper into the tools, fuels, and strategies you need to master this vital skill. When it comes to fire starting tools, variety is key. Lighters like Bi-C or Zippo are staples due to their ease of use. However, they're not infallible. They can fail in wet conditions or run out of fuel. That's why you also need waterproof matches. These are indispensable in your emergency kit, especially in damp environments. But remember, they're consumable and can deplete quickly. Ferro rods are your go-to for durability. They can spark a flame in almost any condition but require practice to use effectively. Similarly, magnesium strikers are reliable across all weather conditions and boast a long lifespan. Don't forget about tinder. Items like cotton balls soaked in petroleum jelly, dryer lint, or commercial fire starters are crucial for igniting a flame, particularly in moist conditions. Now let's talk about fuel types. Wood is your primary choice for fireplaces and wood stoves, perfect for heating and cooking in stationary settings. Hardwoods like oak, maple, and birch are preferable as they burn longer and hotter. Propane, commonly used in camping stoves and portable grills, is clean burning and stores well. Kerosene, efficient for heating and lighting, is used in heaters and lamps and has a long shelf life. Charcoal is great for cooking but is bulky and not ideal for backpacking. Gasoline, though highly flammable, is essential for generators and some stoves. However, it requires careful storage due to its volatility. Alcohol fuels like ethanol or methanol are used in small camping stoves. They're lightweight and burn cleanly. Gel fuels, such as sterno, are compact and safe for indoor use, ideal for cooking or heating food in chafing dishes. Stockpiling is where strategic planning comes into play. For fire starting tools, having 5, 10 lighters and 10, 20 boxes of waterproof matches should cover a year's needs. A couple of ferro rods or magnesium strikers are sufficient due to their long lifespan. A gallon-sized bag of cotton balls with petroleum jelly or a similar quantity of alternative tinder should be enough. Fuel stockpiling varies based on climate and usage. In cold climates, three, six cords of wood might be necessary for heating. A 20 pounds propane tank typically lasts about a month for cooking, so plan for around 12 tanks for a year. Around 100, 200 gallons of kerosene should suffice for heating and lighting. For regular cooking with charcoal, stockpile about 200 and 400 pounds. Gasoline needs careful consideration. 100, 200 gallons stored safely should be planned depending on generator usage. For occasional camping stove use, around 20, 30 liters of alcohol fuels and 20, 30 cans of gel fuels should be adequate. 
Safety and storage cannot be overstressed. Always ensure proper ventilation when burning any fuel indoors. Store fuels in a cool, dry place away from living areas and in appropriate containers. Regularly rotate your stock to keep it fresh, as most fuels have a shelf life. Also, be acutely aware of local regulations regarding fuel storage. 5. Self-Defense and Security Measures Folks, when we talk about firearms for self-defense and security, we're delving into a realm that demands significant responsibility. It's not just about owning a gun, it's about understanding and respecting the power you hold in your hands. This means strictly adhering to all local, state, and federal laws concerning firearm ownership, training, and usage. Remember, the information I'm sharing is general. You've got to tailor it to your specific legal context and personal situation. <laughs> Let's start with handguns, which include pistols and revolvers. These are ideal for personal defense due to their compact size, making them suitable for home defense and in many areas for concealed carry. Popular models like the Glock 17 or 19 are renowned for their reliability and ease of use. Then there's the Smith & Wesson M and P Shield, compact and perfect for concealed carry. And let's not forget revolvers like the Ruger GP100, known for their simplicity and reliability, though they do have a limited capacity. Training here is non-negotiable. You need to be adept at safe handling, accurate shooting, and making quick decisions under stress. Moving on to shotguns, these are powerhouses in home defense. The spread of shotgun pellets increases your chances of hitting an intruder at close range. The Remington 870, a reliable pump-action shotgun, and the Mossberg 500, known for its durability and versatility, are popular choices. Training for shotguns is crucial, focusing on understanding the operation, managing recoil, and ensuring safe storage. Rifles are your go-to for longer-range defense situations and are also commonly used for hunting. The AR-15 is a popular semi-automatic option known for its customizability and versatility. For something less intimidating, the Ruger 10-22, a .22 caliber rifle, is good for small game hunting and basic defense. Effective use of rifles, especially at longer distances, requires skill and training. When it comes to ammunition stockpiling, the quantity depends on your intended use. A few hundred rounds per firearm is a common recommendation for defense, but this varies based on individual needs and local laws. Store your ammunition in a cool, dry place to prevent degradation. Secure locked storage is a must to prevent unauthorized access. Don't overlook non-lethal defense options. Pepper spray can be effective for personal defense with minimal training. Stun guns or tasers are useful for incapacitating an attacker at close range. Your home is your fortress. Reinforce doors and windows with strong locks, security screens, and reinforced frames to deter intruders. Consider installing alarm systems and surveillance cameras. In extreme situations, a safe room in your house reinforced and stocked with essentials can be a lifesaver. Now let's talk best practices and general tips. Regular training is essential for safe and effective use of firearms. Stay informed about local laws regarding firearm use and self-defense. Safety is paramount. Always prioritize the safe handling and storage of firearms and ammunition. Be vigilant about your surroundings and potential threats. In times of crisis, a network of trusted neighbors can be invaluable. Have a clear plan for different scenarios, like a home invasion or a natural disaster. And don't underestimate the psychological impact of using lethal force. Be prepared to deal with its aftermath. For in times of heightened threat, safeguarding your home becomes a top priority. When a massive attack looms over mainland USA, it's crucial to reinforce your home effectively. This means adopting a multi-layered defense strategy that focuses on deterring, delaying, and defending against potential intrusions or attacks. Let's dive into a detailed guide on fortifying your home. Understanding the vulnerable points in your home is the first step. Your doors, including the front, back, and side doors, are common entry points for intruders. Don't overlook garage doors, which can also be weak spots. Ground-level windows, especially those hidden from view, are particularly susceptible to breaches. Other entry points to consider are pet doors, basement entries, and attic vents. These often overlooked areas can provide easy access if not properly secured. When it comes to reinforcement materials, there's a variety you need to consider. Heavy-duty plywood is essential for boarding up windows and glass doors. Invest in extra locks and deadbolts, ensuring they are high-quality and bump-proof to secure all doors. Barbed wire or spike strips can be effective for perimeter defense, but remember to check the legal implications in your area. Sandbags are not just for flood protection, they're also useful for fortifying positions and providing cover against small arms fire. Window security film is a must to make your windows shatter resistant. 
Door reinforcement kits are crucial for strengthening doors against forced entry. Don't forget security bars for both doors and windows. Motion sensor lights to illuminate and deter intruders. Security cameras for monitoring. And alarm systems to alert you and potentially scare off intruders. Reinforcing doors is a critical step. Install grade one or grade two deadbolts on all exterior doors. Use door reinforcement kits to strengthen the door jam, hinges, and the door itself against kicking or ramming. Security bars can be an additional layer of defense, especially for back or side doors. Securing windows is just as important. In extreme situations, board up your windows with heavy duty plywood. Install window security film to prevent the glass from shattering easily. Use security bars or grills as a physical barrier and ensure all windows have sturdy functioning locks. A perimeter defense is your first line of defense. Barbed wire or spike strips can be effective, but check local laws first. A sturdy fence can act as a significant deterrent. Install motion sensor lights around the perimeter of your home to deter intruders. Place security cameras at strategic points for monitoring. Utilizing sandbags can be a game changer. Use them to reinforce potential cover spots or to create barriers around your home. They can provide Provide some level of ballistic protection, which is crucial in the event of small arms fire. Some general tips to keep in mind. Implement a layered defense strategy that includes deterrence, detection, delay, and response. Keep the area around your home well lit and eliminate hiding spots. Work with your neighbors to watch out for each other. There's strength in numbers. Regularly practice home defense drills with household members to ensure everyone knows what to do in case of an emergency. 3. First aid kit and medical supplies. Having a well-stocked first aid kit and a robust supply of medical essentials is not just a good idea, it's a necessity, especially in times of crisis when access to professional medical care might be limited or delayed. Let's dive deeper into what your first aid kit should contain, the uses of these items, their importance, and some guidelines on how much to stockpile and where to store them. When it comes to bandages and dressings, your kit should include a variety of sizes and types. Adhesive bandages are great for minor cuts and scrapes, while sterile gauze pads are essential for larger wounds. Roller bandages are versatile, useful for holding dressings in place or providing support for sprains. Don't forget triangular bandages. They're crucial for making slings or wrapping injuries. Antiseptics and cleansers are vital to prevent infections. Antiseptic wipes or solutions should be used to clean wounds, and having hydrogen peroxide or alcohol on hand is excellent for sterilizing tools or surfaces. Remember, keeping wounds clean is as important as covering them. Your medication supply should be comprehensive. Pain relievers like acetaminophen and ibuprofen are must-haves for managing pain and reducing fever. Antihistamines can be a lifesaver in allergic reactions, while antidiarrheal medications are crucial for handling digestive disturbances. And don't overlook aspirin. It can be a critical aid for heart attack symptoms in adults. Specialized items can make a huge difference in emergencies. Tourniquets are essential for controlling severe bleeding and splints are necessary for immobilizing broken bones or sprains. Thermal blankets, often overlooked, are vital for retaining body heat in cases of shock. Your toolkit should include scissors and tweezers for cutting bandages and removing debris from wounds, respectively. A thermometer is essential for checking fever, a common symptom in many health conditions. Medical gloves are a must to prevent contamination, and a CPR mask is crucial for safe mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Don't forget about prescription medications. If you or family members are on regular medication, ensure you have an adequate supply. A basic first aid manual or instruction should also be part of your kit. In an emergency, even those with first aid training can benefit from a quick refresher. Now, why is having a first aid kit and medical supplies so important? Firstly, injuries and medical emergencies require prompt treatment. A first aid kit allows for immediate action, which can save lives and prevent minor injuries from becoming severe. Secondly, during crises, healthcare systems may be overwhelmed. Having your own supplies ensures you can manage minor ailments and injuries at home. This is not only cost-effective, saving unnecessary medical visits, but also provides peace of mind, knowing you're prepared for emergencies. When it comes to stockpiling, the quantity depends on your household size and the duration you're preparing for. Aim to have enough supplies for at least a week. Store your supplies in a cool, dry place, away from temperature fluctuations and moisture. Ensure your kit is stored in a known, easily accessible location. It's also wise to have smaller kits in your car or workplace. Regularly check expiration dates and replace any used or out-of-date items. Why get these supplies now? In crisis situations, supplies can become scarce due to increased demand. Securing these items now ensures availability. 
Having a kit also allows you to familiarize yourself with the items and their uses and possibly undertake first aid training. In emergencies, having a kit ready can provide a sense of control and reduce panic. Moreover, in a widespread crisis, those with medical supplies and knowledge can support neighbors and community members. Two, calorie-dense, non-perishable food. Stockpiling food for a year of self-sufficiency isn't just a wise decision. It's a crucial step in ensuring the safety and well-being of your family in unpredictable times. Whether it's due to supply chain disruptions, natural disasters, economic downturns, or other unforeseen events, having a well-thought-out stockpile can be a lifesaver. This is about more than just filling your pantry. It's about preparing for the unknown and ensuring that you, your family, and even your pets have enough to sustain yourselves when access to fresh supplies might be compromised. Let's dive into the specifics, starting with calorie needs. It's essential to understand that each family member has unique requirements. An average adult typically needs about 2,000 to 2,500 calories per day, but factors like age, gender, and activity level can alter this. Don't forget the kids and pets. Their needs are different. For instance, an average dog's calorie intake can range from 300 to 1,500 calories per day, depending on factors like size, breed, and activity level. When it comes to the types of food to stockpile, variety and nutritional balance are key. Grains and carbohydrates are your energy cornerstones. Think rice, pasta, oats, and whole grains. These foods not only provide essential energy, but can also be stored for extended periods if kept dry. Proteins are equally important. Stock up on canned meats like chicken, tuna, and salmon, as well as plant-based options like dried beans, lentils, and nuts. They're vital for maintaining muscle and overall health. Don't overlook fruits and vegetables. Canned and dried varieties, along with freeze-dried options, are excellent for long-term storage and are packed with necessary vitamins and minerals. Dairy and dairy alternatives are also crucial. Items like powdered milk and shelf-stable alternatives such as soy or almond milk, along with hard cheeses, can provide essential calcium and other nutrients. Fats and oils like olive oil, coconut oil, and ghee are not just for cooking, they're also calorie dense and vital for your health. And let's not forget about morale. Snacks and comfort foods like energy bars, chocolate, and popcorn can make a big difference in keeping spirits high in challenging times. For your furry friends, ensure you have a sufficient supply of both dry and canned pet food that meets their dietary needs. Seeds and nuts are great for snacking and can add extra calories and nutrients to meals. Baking supplies are also a must. Stocking up on flour, sugar, baking powder, yeast, and other essentials will allow you to make bread and other baked goods. Spices and condiments are crucial for adding flavor to meals and preventing palate fatigue, which can be a real issue in long-term food storage situations. And of course, water is non-negotiable. You'll need at least one gallon per person per day for both drinking and sanitation. Now let's talk about storage and management. Keep your stockpile in a cool, dry, and dark place to maximize shelf life. Organization is key. Maintain an inventory and organize items by expiration dates using a first-in, first-out system. Be vigilant about pest control to protect your supplies and regularly rotate your stockpile to use and replace items before they expire. So why start this process now? The reasons are compelling. Preparedness brings peace of mind and security in uncertain times. By stockpiling now, you're also hedging against potential price increases and shortages in the future. Starting early allows you to learn what works best for your family's needs and preferences. And by integrating stockpiling and rotation into your regular routine, you avoid the pitfalls of panic buying when emergencies strike. 1. Securing a reliable water supply is absolutely critical. For a family of four, you're looking at a significant amount of water to get through an extended emergency. The rule of thumb is one gallon per person each day, covering both drinking and sanitation needs. Over a year, that's roughly 1,460 gallons per person, adding up to about 5,840 gallons for your family. That's a huge volume, and while starting with a stockpile of bottled water is good, it's just not enough for long-term preparedness. When it comes to water purification, you've got to be ready for anything. If your water supply gets contaminated or you're running low, you need reliable methods to make that water safe. Boiling is your first line of defense. It's simple. Boil water for at least a minute to kill off any pathogens. If you're living at high altitudes, say above 5,000 feet, you'll need to boil it for three minutes. Chemical purification is another key method. Have a good stock of water purification tablets on hand. These usually contain iodine, chlorine, or chlorine dioxide. It's crucial to follow the instructions to the letter. You can also use unscented household bleach with 5-6% sodium hypochlorite. 
For this, add eight drops per gallon of water, stir it up, and let it sit for at least 30 minutes before using. Investing in portable water filters is a smart move. Go for high quality ones that are designed for emergencies. You want filters that can tackle viruses, bacteria, and parasites. Brands like Sawyer, Katadin, or LifeStraw are known for their reliability. UV purification is another option. Handheld UV purifiers can zap microbes in the water, but remember, they need power either from batteries or solar. In situations where you're dealing with chemical contamination, distillation is your best bet. This process involves boiling water and then condensing the steam back into water. The contaminants get left behind. And testing your water quality is also crucial. Use water testing kits to check for bacteria, lead, pesticides, nitrates, nitrites, and chlorine levels. These kits are an essential part of your emergency kit. Don't forget about sensory evaluation. Look at the water, smell it, and if it's deemed safe, taste it. Cloudiness, strange odors, or odd flavors can be signs of contamination. And if you do find yourself facing contaminated water, the first thing is to stay calm. Use your stockpiled water first. If you suspect contamination, switch immediately to one of your purification methods. Remember, don't use contaminated water for personal hygiene like bathing or brushing your teeth. Use your stockpile or water you've purified. Make sure every family member knows not to use tap water if it's suspected to be contaminated, and always stay informed. Keep up with local news or follow instructions from authorities regarding contamination alerts and what steps to take next. Thank you for watching.